bottle. Tonight, he came up from his home in North Carolina to see the Red Sox win the World Series, and he brought the bottle. One strike to go. I mean, I had the bottle in my hand just and just never did it. <laughs> so I said I was just going to save the bottle until the Red Sox won the World Series. <laughs> Yeah, we want to see that on your head, Joe, on your head. Oh, there you go. That scene right there probably played out in a lot of living rooms across the room. We try to do that here, but we didn't, didn't think work. you'd appreciate <laughs> champagne all over And you us. know what? If Joe Battenfeld tries to call in sick tomorrow, we have that yeah, video to prove. We are. know what you were up to tonight, <laughs> Joe Battenfeld. All right, we want to head upstairs now to Rob Nicoleski with the highlights of this game because you know what? We can't see these highlights enough. No, show it to us again, Rob. No, that was a great story with Joe, and you know David, Maria, all of us here at Fox 25, I cannot count how many times we've done this stupid story about the Red Sox not being able to win a World Series and having to bring up this story, this book, The Curse of the Bambino. Well, you know what? Tonight, we can throw it away. Let's take a look at the highlights. Game four between the Red Sox and the Cardinals at Bush Stadium. First inning, Johnny Damon comes up, leading off against Jason Marquis, and see ya, a home run to right four games in this World Series, and in all four games, the Sox scored in the first inning. one nothing Red Sox. Damon hitting 333 since game six against the Yankees. Third inning, Trot Nixon with the bases loaded, a bullet to right field that bounces off the top of the wall. That scores David Ortiz. That scores Jason Veritek. A double to make it 3 nothing Boston. The Red Sox get the lead. Pedro's excited, and that was plenty for Derek Lowe. The guy who started the postseason in the bullpen turns in a stellar performance tonight. Seven innings, no runs, three hits, four strikeouts, just as he did against the Yankees in game seven. Lowe was masterful, and he gets a hug from Pedro in the dugout. Can you feel the love? The Red Sox had a couple of chances to break this one wide open, but it didn't matter, though. Keith Folk finishes off in the ninth, tosses it over to first base, and ladies and gentlemen, the Boston Red Sox our World Series champions. Love to hear those words. The Sox win in a four-game sweep. Manny Ramirez named the series MVP. The Sox set a postseason record by winning eight straight games. They were never behind in this World Series. And let's head back out to Bush Stadium where Butch Stearns is standing by. Butch? I'm with Tony Maserati of the Boston Herald who's covered this team for a long, long time. What are we going to read when we pick up the Herald tomorrow? I don't think you can read enough good things, Butch, in all honesty. Obviously, it's a, it's a story beyond words, and uh, this team deserves a tremendous amount of credit. They brought a lot of guys in here, had tremendous strength of character, obviously, to do what they did. And I think to play in Boston and to win in Boston, it takes a unique collection of talent and of, of character and of individuals. and. Clearly, that's what this team was. There's so many storylines here. It's so amazing to me that they won eight in a row after being down 0-3 against the Yankees. But what sticks out in your mind, either from this series or from this playoff run? I mean, to me, uh, you got to go back to Game Four. It was they were dead. It was over, Bush, and it was they were down four to three to Mariano Rivera with two strikes on Kevin Millar, who's against the greatest closer in the history of the game, if not, and certainly of postseason baseball. To, to start it there with a walk, of all things, and end up here, I don't, I don't think anybody ever could have foreseen that. But again, I, I think it's a reflection on, uh, really, on the players on the team. And if you contrast how the Cardinals reacted when they were down 0-3 compared to how the Red Sox reacted, I think you understand why the Red Sox are where they are. It almost empowered them. Once they beat the Yankees, it was like the 1980 Olympians when they beat the Russians. Yeah. There was no going back. Well, and I think that this was anticlimactic to a certain degree. But, you know, for a franchise that has has had, obviously, one of the greatest droughts in the history of professional sports, to now own the longest postseason winning streak in baseball history, there's more than a touch of justice and irony there. All right, real quick, yes or no, is Pedro back? Uh, I'm going to say yes. Wow. Is Lowe back? No. Is Veritek back? I'm going to say yes on Veritek and Pedro, no on Lowe. Is Carrer Cabrera back? Uh, I would say yes on Cabrera. Wow. Are you back? <laughs> I'll be back, that's for sure. Thanks, Max. A lot of people like to see All me, right. though. All right. Tony Maserati of the Boston Herald. Let's take it over. A couple of fans yeah. over here. Yeah. Yeah. What's your name? Yeah. Eric Hamlet. Where are you from? Connecticut. Connecticut? You got, did you come all the way out here? Or? I live here now, but I'm a diehard Red Sox fan. There you go. Somebody's well, got to pinch me. What's your I name? I can't believe My it. name's Jim Clauser. Jim, where are you from? Right here in St. Louis. Oh, are you? You're yeah. a Cardinals fan? 
Yeah, but you know what? We got Cardinals fans oh. celebrating. Oh. He's a new, he's a new member of Red Sox hey, Nation. I'll tell you what, baseball fan more than anything, and if anybody's gonna beat us, you can't ask for anything better. Congratulations, man. Be All right, give me, give us another wicked piss up. Yeah. Wicked piss up. Wicked piss, that says it all, doesn't David Murray? <laughs> yes, all right, thank you, Butch, we appreciate it. All right, well, check out this video right now. Cr the crowds are still out there around the Fenway area. And it appears that they are getting a little feisty. Police are only at this point confirming one arrest, but our crews have seen several arrests at this point. Let's head up to Sky Fox. Doug, me in with a bird's eye view. What are you seeing now, Doug? Well, Marie and David, I'll give you a point of reference here. This is the uh, bottom end. This is back of the uh, Mass Pike down below and uh, Kenmore Square up top. So that's the, like the Buckmeister Hotel and the Pizzeria Uno coming up on the corner. Uh, the police have just uh, continued their line of uh, tactical officers and uh, officers on uh, motorcycles. And you know, for some reason, uh, some of these folks decide that they don't want to go. And we've even seen some taunting the police, uh, sitting down in the middle of the street, taunting them. And uh, the police have just uh, maintained pretty much their cool. I've noticed a few of them using some spray of some sort. I don't know if it was a, a pepper spray uh, from you know, the canisters or, or some type of uh, a repellent, but they have been using on, on some of the uh, rowdier members of these crowds. Uh, but if they've, they've got to a point now where they've just stopped uh, and uh, trying to push everybody back into, or maybe not push, but suggest that everybody move it along and move back down into the uh, Kenmore Square area. Again, we've had seen several arrests. We've also seen several ambulances uh, uh, leave the area with people in the back. We don't know the extent of any injuries. Uh, but uh, as folks exit the bars and the different watering holes, uh, police uh, suggest that they move along, and for the most part, they have. And if you'll see by these wide pictures here at Kenmore Square, uh, they've done a great job of filtering some folks out, but there is a good number of folks just around the corner that still remain, and uh, they've got their work still ahead of them. That's the latest from Sky Fox. Back to you guys in-house. All right, Doug, we, uh, I'm not sure you could see it, but we can see it from our vantage point here. There's video of a young man on the ground with police surrounding him. It looks like uh, they're getting out a stretcher for him. It's hard to tell if he's been hurt by something in the crowd or if he was uh, perhaps, you talked about pepper spray uh, being used by police perhaps to keep back these crowds that are blocking the police from doing their job. So we're not sure what's happened to this young man, uh, but he is Obviously being lifted injured. away uh, from the scene there. His jeans are all torn up there is something in the air there it looks like we're not sure if that's just uh, smoke in the air from the fireworks that people have been setting off we're not quite sure but as Maria said things are starting to get a little bit feisty with some of these people Doug Meehan just mentioning that you just have to ask why someone would do this but people are actually sitting on the ground lining up in front of the police officers basically daring the police officers right. to move him move them and that's you, what the police are doing they're moving them back it's exactly what police have said that they would do all along. Police are uh, trying certainly to keep things peaceful and for the most part things have been peaceful but there have been a number of arrests and with that we want to head back to Fox 25's Dan Janik outside of Fenway Park with some video of an arrest that happened just a couple of minutes ago. Dan? You know David and Maria I think Doug touched on it. What you have is all these people wanting to be out here in Fenway and just celebrating this historic event that we've waited so many years for and then you have police who are trying to make sure that this all ends peacefully and trying to make sure people dissipate, the crowd dissipates. What I was trying to tell you and what Doug was trying to touch on is that they've drawn a line. This is the state police and the local police have drawn a line and I want to show you that video right now. This is uh, the video you're about to see is one person who's been arrested. This uh, guy actually laid down face down in front of police trying to incite something. Not you know the brightest bulb in the tree there and then we have the line of police here this is the line I'm talking about you can see that officer right there actually has one of those pump guns I'm not really sure exactly what it is but it's one of those pump, pump pellet guns it hasn't been used and this is the line right now at Yawkey and Boylston and they're trying to push the crowd back and in doing so there have been some incidents there have been at least a few arrests uh, people have been throwing things as we go back live to Sky Fox but again overall the challenge right now for authorities is to dissipate this crowd and make sure there is no uh, you know, injuries or anything like that. Right now, considering the crowd that showed up here, things have been going okay for right now, but in the next hour and a half or so, police, one officer telling me that they're hoping to dissipate this crowd before things get ugly. 
David, Maria? Dan, that's what I was just going to ask you. Are police, is there a cutoff point where they say, okay, we've had enough of this, everybody go home, or are they going to let us, let this go until, you know, people go on their own. Until they go on their own. They aren't, they're not giving us an exact time, David and Maria, but I look at the clock, it's 1.20 in the morning, so I'm sure that they're trying to, you know, wrap things up. But they're doing it in a very respectful way. They're doing it in a very calm manner. No, you know, outward burst towards people here. It's just basically, like I said, people want to celebrate an unbelievable event that all of us have been waiting so long for, and they want to be here at Fenway. They want to be around this group. They want to give the high fives, and police obviously have the job and the challenge to dissipate this crowd so that we don't have another violent night like we did during Game 7 against New York. And Dan, okay, thank you very much, Dan Janigan. And as we look at this video and as we talk about this, we want to make sure that we are very specific in, way, in the way we describe things. We were told by Boston police that they, wouldn't, that they would be using some type of uh, less than lethal weapon, some type of right. weapon to dissipate the crowds tonight. We were told a couple of days ago that they would not be using these pepper balls that they used last week, which ended in the death of that young Emerson student, Tori Snellgrove. Now, Dan mentioned that they might be using those guns. And in the videotape, on one of the shots, you could see a police officer holding up a gun and on top of the gun, there was a black plastic canister with a clear cap on the top. Now, that is normally the type of canister you will see on one of these guns. It's the standard canister that you see on a paintball gun that a lot of people use. And in this videotape right there, you can see that type of gun. So what isn't clear at this point is whether or not they have decided to go back to using those guns, those less than lethal guns with the pepper balls, or if they're using some type of gun with the same type of setup but only with a different type of capsule with a different type of projectile. So these are some of the things that we're going to try to figure out uh, as the night goes on. But again, still fairly peaceful. Right. Having arrests is not a big surprise. When you have those type of people, those amounts of people right. on the street, you're going to have arrests. I think you have arrests after a regular game at Fenway well, Park. Well, Boston police expected that, and they said, we expect to make those arrests because we want to make sure that we try to keep these things under control. And if the fans are not cooperating, they'll be arrested. That's the bottom line. Absolutely. Well, we are certainly going to keep that perspective as the night goes on, that yes. this is still very much a fun night. Yes, it is, because we won the World Series. Now, what we do here at Fox 25 a lot of times is that we wonder what the headline will be, and David and I were asking each other before. That's not what we thought that it would be, but you're looking at the Boston Globe. You're going to see this tomorrow morning on your doorstep on top of the world. We have not seen the headline from the Herald yet. We are waiting to see that. It'll also be interesting to see what the headlines are out of the New York papers. The New York Post always has catchy headlines, especially when it comes to the Red Sox, especially comes with to the curse of the Bambino. So it'll be interesting to see what they have for a cover as well. Well, we want to head back to St. Louis now because on the field you have Butch Stearns. He's hanging out with VB from the morning show and they're causing trouble. That's, I don't know about that, David. I do know this. We've got about a dozen of us out here who've been covering all this, and I'm proud to represent all the people that have been working here. I know there's going to be a lot of Red Sox fans staying up all night, but I can guarantee this is one of them. You are going to be up all night. World Series <laughs> champs, Butch, come on. Crank it up. I mean, this is unbelievable. Oh, I hope everybody, I know the party is going on in Boston, but this ain't such a bad place to be either. What? We were in the locker room. Yeah, right? I want to hear from you. It, it's almost old hat for us that cover the team because oh. we're in locker rooms. You're not in there a lot. You saw the scene that was going on. Give me your impression. Unbe I, Pedro Martinez, the look on his eyes, the look on his face, a man contented, a man complete, just couldn't believe it. Just kept running around screaming. He's got a flag. He's waving it. He's throwing champagne over. How did you stay dry? I smell that shirt, Butch. How's that <laughs> smell? Yeah, dry, real fresh. <laughs> Woo, this shirt is never getting washed, though. It's unbelievable. thing I'll remember most, the look in Tim Wakefield's eyes, people pouring champagne and beer over him, tears Crying. coming down yeah. his eyes. Very emotional guy. And Trot Nixon just came over and hugged him. Uh, then uh, Embry and Timlin came over. They all were talking about Wakefield. They just they just wanted to share the moment with him. And it was unbelievable. Yeah, to you be know, in people there. always ask us in the business, well, you must enjoy it. But a scene like that, it'll stick with you for a long time. Oh, right? you can't imagine the feeling. And you saw Derek Lowe come back out taking pictures with fans from Red Sox Nation on the mound, holding up babies on the mound where he won game four. And Arroyo shaking everybody's hand that stuck in here, taking pictures with them, grabbing cell phones of people back in Boston going, we did this for you guys. I mean, they really wanted the fans to be part of this. Unbelievable feeling here. You're back State. on the air in less than six hours. What's going to happen in the next six hours for you? Uh, I don't know. We're just going to go outside <laughs> of the stadium because they're booting us all out of here and we're going to party on the outside of this stadium and just try and enjoy the fact that I never thought I'd say this, but 2004, the Boston Red Sox are world champs, baby. It's a beautiful Glad to have you here, VB. It was awesome, fun, fun sharing awesome. it with you, man.
All right, VB of the Fox 25 Morning News. Of course, it's on in what, five and a half hours? And he'll be here. World champ, bud. <laughs>